Hey guys, so I'm going to try a new video essay format and a cross comparison between two albums rather than just talk and sing the praises of one or the lows of it. I've been trying to make one of these for a while and originally it was going to be 29 vs Starcross but there was just so much more to say on why Starcross failed that I thought it should be its own video. Today I want to talk about two very ambitious projects and how one thrives and one didn't do that. So Hicks Tape 2, remember that? Anyone? Anyone? Now, I know Hicks Tape 1 has its fans, and while I'm not one of them, there's not much to critique and analyze that isn't surface level. Hicks Tape 2, on the other hand, is such a complete and abject failure on nearly every level, it's astonishing. Not much has changed with my thoughts on it, it's still a 4 out of 10 album that really had no need for existing. It's so rare to see a project this mass appealing be rejected on this scale, and the only song people actually liked came from a different album. It's a bit sad to see Hardy's Passion Project bomb this badly, and the odds of another Hicks Tape seem very unlikely after the failure failure of this one, which is probably for the best. Its memorability and impact is so minimal, it's kind of shocking. It had these big goals to be one of the biggest releases of the latter half of the year, and now no one talks about it. Then there's Dave Cobb's Southern Family, which, if you haven't guessed, is one of the most exemplary and massive scaled country projects in recent memory. Which brings in so much top tier talent together, it's insane. It's the Avengers of modern country music coming together. Southern Family at its core is about portraying Southern values in a way that's compelling and endearing. Even when the songs aren't deep ballads, they are very serious and carry much weight, even when it gets lighthearted. Now, there are a few unfair comparisons that I'm not going to levy against Hicks Tape 2 in this video, namely the fact these albums are going for wildly different aspirations artistically, as well as the fact that Southern Family is a concept album and progresses its narrative effectively. And I don't think it's right to bring up narrative cohesion because Hicks Tape was never going for that. So I'm only going to compare both of them and their songs as separate entities. Because for every falter Hicks Tape 2 has, Southern Family thrives in comparison. The first thing that should be addressed is how both of these projects come from vastly different worlds in terms of country music. Hicks Tape feels like a corporate output you'd see from an album in country music. A majority of the artists featured on there aren't particularly known for being good, and the ones that are aren't really regarded as actively artistic. And from a musical standpoint, the entire record rings up the commercial side of today's country so much. It's overly bombastic, there's not much lyrical effort put into it, and it's actively chasing sounds and trends that make it feel inauthentic from a sonic standpoint. Versus Southern Family, which is mostly indie label stars with absolute creative freedom, and the only mainstream stars a part of this were the most respected in the field was Chris Stapleton, Miranda Lambert, and Zach Brown Band. A thing most like to see with compilation records is having songs adapted to what the artists themselves do. Take Reboot by Brooks and Dunn, for example. You have all these classic 90s and early 2000s songs being completely reworked to match the artists singing them. Neon Moon went from a mellow country crooner to a folk pop song when it was sung by Casey Musgraves. Luke Combs turned the already engaging brand new man into an even more thunderous anthem. Here, well, let's just say they didn't go that route. Hicks Tape 2, in all honesty, really just chases whatever trends are out there in hopes that one of these songs will become a hit. You have the attempts of bro country with hometown boys and drink up, the more frat boy type energy Morgan Wallen gives off on Red Dirt Clouds, which isn't sung by Morgan Wallen for some reason, the more pop end with small town on it. This isn't trying to bring artists together naturally, it's just desperately trying to make a hit song out of any of these worthless, lazy attempts at music. Not even the song with Morgan Wallen took off, because it's just not enticing from any sonic standpoint. I think this is a good way to detour to talk about the producers behind these projects. Dave Cobb and Joey Moy. Dave Cobb, as I'm sure most of you know, is responsible for some of the best modern country music to date. From Chris Stapleton's Traveler, to Jason Isbell's Southeastern, to the first two Sturgill records. He's known for bringing up these classic sounds and gives them a modern tone, and in some cases, even a more classic tone. He even experiments with new techniques from time to time, and most of it's pulled off exceptionally. At the end of the day, Dave Cobb chases artistic integrity when it comes to his music. Joey Moy, on the other hand, is kinda the opposite of everything I just said. He makes music for money. There's no active searching for creating new sounds or new artistry, he just chases whatever's popular and does extremely poor attempts at emulating it. Look at his repertoire and you see what I mean. Here's to the good times. Girl problems. Product of a small town. There's a vast clear difference in terms of artistic direction between the two, and it becomes obvious when you compare the way these two albums were handled. For the most part, Hicks Tape 2 and Southern Family feature artists each of the producers have worked with, but Cobb is the only one that does the noble thing in keeping the way the artists sound on this new music, because the core intention of Southern Family is to get the artists' identities as Southern people put into this album, and that includes their musical identities. Chris Stapleton keeps his rock soul flair on his rendition of You Are My Sunshine, 
Anderson East brings it with the style of funk on learning. Jason Isbell's alt-country roots on God as a Working Man, and yet despite all the different subgenres at play here, Cobb manages to keep a precise tone and balance to everything, making it all seem like a normal functioning album. A southern family, if you will. Hickstape 2 has absolutely no consistency whatsoever, its mixing is incredibly unbalanced for way more than half its runtime, and a majority of it sounds like it was recorded at vastly different periods of time. If you don't know, in the documentary for Southern Family, all the artists were together during the recording process of the album. Album. Cobb worked with all of them and got their artistic value put into a 12 song collection that is musically and tonally consistent. Here, it really just feels like Joey told them, this is what you're gonna sing, no ifs, ands, or buts, and then butchered the mastering of all the songs as he's prone to do. And I think the final thing I really want to touch on is how culture is portrayed on these albums. Because while it's clear that these albums are going in vastly different musical directions, they both share the same goal trying to portray Southern culture. Now, I'm not a proper judge of Southern culture, but if you had to take a guess which one is actively trying harder to portray Southern values, which one do you think it is? Hickstape 2 are excellent comparisons in terms of talking about the identity of country music as a whole today. So Hickstape 2, I think there's really no denying it's a bro country album. And when you're a bro country album, you usually portray southern culture pretty poorly. And it comes off as nothing but pandering to an age group rather than connecting with southern culture at large. The furthest extensions to it in Hickstape is, I drive truck. I drink beer. I like the lady. Ladies. And a few actually good breakup songs, not gonna lie. The first song is all about how no one has ever written a song for the hometown boy. Yeah, there has never been a single song beforehand. Not one. And afterward, almost every single song is about the same thing till the end of its runtime. I will say, on paper, there is one song I think has a pretty solid premise, with it being WD-40 for WD. Rather than just naming the two most popular trucks like you've seen a million times over, this song attempts to focus on WD-40, which is a penetrating fluid to fight rust. Now, that's not something you actually see in the average mainstream song. That's a solid premise. I wonder what they're gonna do with it. Yeah, yeah, this song just degrades the actually interesting premise into what you probably expected. You'd think we'd expect this by now. It's the only glimmer of potential for interesting looks at Southern culture. I mean, what do you expect from an album with song titles like I Smoke Weed, Beer With My Buddies, One Of Y'all, Beer Song. This album doesn't feel like it's trying to show experiences that people can relate to, it just feels like corporate pandering. It references beers 11 and trucks 10 times out of 14 songs. And not light banter, they're the most active part in terms of their lyricism. Probably the funniest line is when they refer to idolizing George Strait. Like, bruh, 20 years ago he made a song in protest to music like this, he does not look upon you favorably. All in all, Hickstape 2 is a desperate attempt to establish the frat bro brand, and it did incredibly poorly. Hardy's somewhat solid portrayals in his album A Rock feel like they did not influence this album whatsoever. And I mean, given Hardy's recent output, yeah, that makes sense. If this album at least attempted to be endearing, even in its more driven moments, maybe this album could have been more than just a bad release. Southern Family, on the other hand, gives one of the most raw and beautiful portrayals of Southern culture I've ever seen. One of the biggest things I admire is how each of these songs reflect all of these people's experiences, and yet they all fit into this grand idea and vision Dave Cobb has crafted. Learning shows Anderson East's childhood and his upbringing and his relationship with his father, reflecting on their time together, venturing out for a musical career, and how divorce affected him. And it isn't a deep, slow, mellow ballad, which probably most of you assumed. It's an upbeat and groovy song with more fun and warmth than anything Hicks Tape 2 ever offered. Hickstape does very lazy attempts at the more blue collar narrative. Actual blue collar lifestyle is at the center of God is a Working Man sung by Jason Isbell, which tells the story of how God in a way is like a blue collar worker, never clocks out till the day is done, trying to do the best work possible. It's truly beautiful. Face is at the forefront of this album and ties into so many of the tracks and shows just how many forms and perspectives Face and God can take. Grandma's Garden shows the grandchild's newfound perspective of the head of the family and how she kept everyone together and weeded out what could go wrong, showing the sheer impact this woman has had on the family, and I can't be totally sure, but possibly Zach Brown himself. 
Chris and Morgan Stapleton express their love for each other in this incredible rendition of You Are My Sunshine. It's gritty yet full of romanticism most albums can't accomplish in their entire runtime. I'm not even cherry picking, in fact a majority of the songs I've mentioned are my favorite songs on the project. I don't want to spoil the deeper parts because I think they should be experienced blind, but probably my favorite detail comes in Shooter Jennings' Can You Come Over where he references Cheerwine which if you don't know is a cherry soda based in the Carolinas and spoiler alert it's delicious. I know it isn't that serious but it's a small detail like that that I just love and shows more dedication to southern imagery than Hicks tape ever had. Another problem with Hicks tape is the sausage fest going on in there. There's only two women out of the 33 performers and the songs they appear on do not reflect their experiences as women in country whatsoever. Meanwhile, Southern Family has Miranda Lambert, Morgan Stapleton, Holly Williams, and Brandi Clark who tell beautiful stories and reflect their experiences so passionately. And one can even argue Zach Brown's and Jamie Johnson's songs do that as well. All of these songs bring so much warmth, love, and tragedy, all of it tied together beautifully with its themes and storytelling. At this point, what do you think is the more enticing look at Southern culture? A bunch of 30 year old men acting like they are a part of a fraternity, or stories about how a mother's table carries so much love and experiences, how parents shape ourselves, and how them falling apart affects us, trying to make a life for ourselves, reflecting on loved ones who have passed on, our values in faith and honest work ethic. Southern Family is everything Hicks Tape can only dream to be. A project that shows nothing but passion and dedication to artistry, showing people exactly what Southern culture is rather than just giving stereotypes people meme to death. An incredibly precise vision from one of the most respected and adored producers in all of music, and one that's the equivalent to Illumination Studios. Hicks Tape 2 is an album that lazily panders to consumers. Meanwhile, Southern Family is an album that actively connects with people. I love Southern Family, so much so that it's in my top 3 favorite albums of all time. It's an absolutely stunning tale of Southern values and culture that is unflinchingly raw and honest. And I hope this video gets more people to check out just how amazing this album is.